I'm now going to show you some intermediate techniques that you can use to solve your cross more quickly. So when you're solving your cross, you might notice that your cross solutions are not very efficient, particularly if you're solving only one cross piece at a time. To solve your cross more quickly and in fewer moves, here are some tips you can try and implement when you're doing so. You should also be aware that no matter how scrambled your cube is, any single cross on any single side can be solved in 8 moves or less, and at the moment you're probably using more than 8 moves on average to solve your crosses, and the goal now is basically just to reduce the number of moves that you use to solve the cross. From now on, I want you to always solve the cross on the bottom layer. As you get faster, this will become more and more useful because it will save you a cube rotation between the cross and F2L. So this is not completely strict in the sense that you, you, know, you have to hold it on the bottom the whole time while you're solving it, but you should definitely try and finish your cross with it on the bottom face. So the first tip that I can give you is something again that I taught in module 3, which is solving offset crosses. So this means solving cross pieces into positions that are correct relative to one another, but not necessarily completely solved. So here we see that our cross is off by one move, like that, and all we need to do to solve it is do the D, like that. Now in many cases it can be a lot faster to solve the cross into a position like this, rather than directly solving the four edge pieces into their correct positions. This requires you to become more familiar with your colour scheme, and for example know that if you have this white and orange cross edge, the blue one goes over here, and the green one goes over here. For a more detailed explanation of solving crosses into offset positions, check out the video in the third module, Optimising the Beginner's Method. So the second tip I'll give you is a building block for being able to solve multiple cross pieces at a time, and I firstly need to introduce you to the concept of good and bad edges. So good edges are cross edges that you can place into the cross layer using one move. So for example, this edge is good, because we can place it like that, and this edge is also good, because we can you know, solve this piece over here, and then place that one. This edge is bad because it requires more than one move to solve, and so is this edge. It's also bad because we can't just put it up like that. So good edges are cross edges that you can place into the cross layer in one move, and bad edges are the cross edges where it takes you two or more moves to place them into the cross layer. So the thing you need to know is that if we're smart about what we do, Whilst we solve one good edge, we can turn another edge from a bad case into a good case, so we can move the misoriented bad ones into the middle layer so they become far easier to solve. So here are a few examples to show you what I mean. So here we have an example where we're solving the cross on the bottom, and we have this cross piece solved, and we also notice that we can solve this white and green edge with just one move like that. However, we also see this white and orange edge, which is a bad case up the top because it's not correctly oriented. So instead of solving this one and then going on to solve this one, we can solve them both at the same time. If we do a U2, like that, and then doing our L moves this bad edge from the top layer into the middle layer here, and we can just simply solve it in one move, like that. Here's another case where we can easily orient a bad edge. So we've solved these two pieces in the left and the back here, and we have this cross piece here which we can put into the bottom layer with one move, and we also have this cross piece here which belongs down here. So instead of just doing that and then going on to solve this one, what we can do is move this into the middle layer, bring this edge on top of it, so that when we move it down, this edge becomes into the middle layer, and then we can directly solve it, like so. For this example, I'll hold the cross on the top just for demonstration purposes. So we have this cross edge here that we can solve using one move and put it into the top layer, like that. But we also notice we have this bad edge in the front position here, this white and orange edge that we need to put in the back like that. So if we do this move like that, then this one needs to go over here, which is quite a bad case to solve. So instead of doing that, we can, before we do this move, bring this edge on top of the piece that we're going to solve, therefore we solve that one, and this one goes into the middle layer, and we can solve it directly like that. The other thing you should be aware of is not to turn good edges into bad edges. So for example, we have this edge here in the middle layer, and we also have this edge. If we do an R like that, this edge goes into the bottom and it becomes a bad edge. So undo that. What we can do firstly is, to prevent that happening, we can insert this edge first, align it correctly over here, 
and then insert this edge, which is a lot faster than inserting this one and then figuring out how to solve that one. So previously, when you've been solving the cross, you've probably just been trying to solve one cross piece at a time and focusing on each individual edge piece as you solve it. So to move on and solve your cross more quickly, you need to practice planning out more cross pieces in your inspection time. So you need to plan out how you're going to solve multiple cross edges and be able to track other cross edges whilst you're solving one cross edge. So let's do a simple example to demonstrate tracking cross edges whilst you're solving it. So you'll be surprised to know that you can solve this cross edge, this one, this one, and this one in only five moves. So let's start with these two cross pieces. If we do an R prime to insert that one, and then an F2 to insert that one, then they're not solved correctly relative to one another. This is because this green one belongs over here, and this red one belongs over here. However, if we insert this green one here, then this red one will belong over here. So for example, if we do an R2 to place it in, and then do an F, now these two cross pieces are solved relative to one another because all we need to do to solve them is do a D like that. Backtracking to our starting position again, we notice that if we do those two moves, so the R2 to bring this one down, and then the F to bring this one from here to here, this cross piece will end up here. So R2, F like that, this is the white and blue cross piece, which if we put it here, will be correctly solved relative to the white and red and the white and green one. So if we do an L there, then all we need to do is correctly align those cross pieces and our last edge was here as we saw and we can put it down, which was only five moves to solve that relatively complicated case. So that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about when I say you need to plan multiple cross pieces in inspection and you need to move on from just solving one at a time. After you practice, a lot of the time you'll be able to plan and solve three edge pieces fairly easily, but it can be a stretch to sometimes plan and solve the fourth one as well. So here are a few simple algorithms that you can use to solve your final cross edge into position if you end up with a bad case. So let's say you solved your first three cross edges and your fourth edge ends up down here. To solve it quickly, we can do the algorithm r prime small u r prime small u prime and it's solved. If you've solved your first three cross pieces and your last edge is a bad edge in the top layer here, we can do this really easy and really quick algorithm to insert this into the position down here. It's just R prime F R like that. Similarly, if this edge is on the left hand side, we can do L F prime L prime. It's also handy to know how to insert this one into the back position. So this is the white and red, which belongs back here. And say we've solved these three cross pieces like that. We can just do R, B prime, R prime, and that solves it down here. If you've solved three cross edges and your last edge ends up over here, instead of rotating and you know misaligning your cross with a D2, placing it in and then doing a D2, there's a much faster way to solve it. All we need to do to move a cross piece from here to here is do R2, F, R2, like that. 